Yeah, and we're live. <laughs> first, first one of the day. Good morning. Welcome to another Simply Diagnostics video from a bright and sunny Cheshire. How are you all today? How are you all today? Are you all fantastic? Are you all cool? I'll wait for a few minutes for everybody to get in here. I'm just looking for. That's what I'm looking for. The visual aids. As you can see. Oh, there's ten people in here. Ten people in here already. Fantastic. We like we like that lot. We like that lot. We like that lot. How are we all? Morning, Richard. Are you tired, Gavin? How are you? Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Right, well, what have we got in store for you today? Right, so some of you yesterday will have seen um, I was putting some repair pigtails. Morning, Wes. I was putting some repair pigtails in the harness. Uh, testing pigtails in the harness on Thunderbird 1. Just to... Uh, morning, planet. Yeah, some testing pigtails just to make scoping a little bit easier. But we have a we have a problem. We have a problem. The van would start, but it was um, coming up with a fault code for fuel pressure. Nelson, <laughs> a Barry Akobana. Yeah, a Barry Amchana. Yeah, so we had uh, we had zero rail pressure. The vehicle had start and run, but really, really smoky. Me wiring diagram. We'll just show you now. Sorry for the flicker for the 58 flicker, but you can see that's me rail pressure sensor. Pin one. The black wire is a shielded is a ground shielding for the fuel rail pressure. Sour. It. Uh, and then we've got the actual orange blue on pin one. Pin two is the signal. Pin three, five volt reference, I think, if I remember rightly. But what we've got a problem is we've got a short to ground. And the way we test that is I've got an LED test light connected to battery positive, and I've actually got the engine ECU unplugged. So all I've got is the loom basically the loom going all the way round and then if you can see there my, my rail pressure sensor morning Dave my rail pressure sensor you can see I've got it front probe there it's only tucked in lightly and then what I've got here on the black wire I've actually got a permanent ground fixed up through a fuse jumper so my test light to battery positive Put it on the ground my test light lights up this is an led test light i don't want to fire any current through it i just want to see if i've got a short to ground so on these three wires there should be no continuity to ground because i've got the ecu unplugged but if i stick my test light in there lo and behold pin two signal wire my test light lights up so if I come back to where I've done these are all my repair pigtails that I put on here yeah and what because all I'm going to do is gently manipulate that wire in there so I'm going to manipulate the wire in here and you watch that test light can you see it and literally all I'm doing is just touching it I'm not even putting any massive pressure on it yeah, I'm just touching it. So what I suspect there is I've actually got the ground. You can see, if you can see the bare copper there, focus, that's the actual earth shielding for the rail pressure sensor. So what I suspect I've got, I've got a solder spike or something like that and it's gone through the insulation tape. But dead easy way to do short to ground testing. Test light to battery positive. If there's no ground there, that light shouldn't light up. And what we can also do is, 
with the you can see there on the side of the test light it says 6 and 12 volt DC 20 milliamps this actual test light only pulls about 5 milliamps so I'm not in any danger of damaging anything or letting any smoke out or anything like that so I hope that's a little handy tip for you and when you're doing your soldering really really late at late at night make sure that you don't get any solder spikes that's, see that's a permanent fault there we go so there we go hope you enjoyed that we've got um, we're <laughs> Yeah, uh, Alan, I literally I got um, got to the point where I was poking that many holes in. I thought, right, I'm going to put some permanent pigtails in here. But unfortunately, I've shot myself in the foot. But saying that, we've now got a, we've now got another video out and been able to show you short to ground testing. So, just to recap, that brown blue wire is my signal wire, and there's absolutely no way that should be shorted to ground. So coming on later today we're going to have another play with the e-scope, we've got the e-scope out ready, we're going to do some scoping, cam crank and uh, all sorts of little bits and pieces but I'm going to repair my mistake first. So it happens to it happens to all of us. So when you're doing your wiring repairs and stuff like that it always pays to check your circuits once you've finished. Obviously you know this hasn't done any dam. well I hope it hasn't done any permanent damage um, but that could have been a very very costly mistake just for a bit of sloppy soldering so we'll take uh, we'll take a picture of that and I'll put it I'll put a picture of the offending solder spike up when I find it in, on the community tab yeah it is it, it was uh, HGS Gary uh, oh no it was Yanis that said uh, yeah it's hello HGS mate so yeah so it can happen, can happen to all of us. I mean, I've been soldering for years and I've still made that mistake, being sloppy yesterday. So, yeah. Make sure you got that bell struck for notifications and we'll see you later on today. Thanks for watching. You're awesome.